Hi, I'm Melissa from M Soon, and today we're gonna be doing some things to help if you have any low back discomfort, tightness, or pain, and also if you have any knee pain going on. A lot of the muscles that we're gonna target for mobility today are great for both of the joints because the muscles go below the knee and above the hip and into that back. And then at the end, we're gonna finish up with some core and glute strengthening to help stabilize everything after we got that mobility. So a couple of props that you might need. Um, a small ball like this, this is a rad ball, I love those. If not, you can use a yoga block, you can use your yoga mat rolled up. And then if you have a tennis ball, a lacrosse ball, this is also another rad ball that I love using for myofascial work. Start on our backs first. And you're gonna start with either taking the rad gray ball or your yoga block. And the yoga block can be on the second height. We're gonna place everything between our shoulder blades. So right in the middle, trying to open up that chest. Okay. So the ball's in between the middle of your shoulder blades. Your head's gonna relax back. If, you, if it feels like it's too much of a stretch, you could put something like a little pillow underneath. You wanna make sure your low back isn't arching up like this. So you kinda use that core, take your tailbone, tuck it underneath, pull that core up and in so that you're really feeling it right in between the middle of those shoulder blades. And I'm just gonna take the arms, slowly float those arms, reach all the way up overhead, and be careful you don't arch the low back. You wanna keep that tailbone tucked underneath and really feel it right in between those shoulder blades. And then slowly bring it back down. If you're using the yoga block, it's gonna be a little bit more intense than this, so maybe you just leave your arms resting down by the side or your palms are up on it. Inhale, float, lift those arms, come all the way up. Exhale, bring the arms back down. This is great because it's opening up the middle of our back. We tend to get rounded and stuck in this position. It's also really good to help with overhead reaching and if you've had any neck discomfort going on. One more time, reach those arms all the way up overhead and then slowly bring them back down. Then you're gonna take your hands, interlace your hands, place them behind your back. Drive the elbows down behind you to open through the chest. Same thing, watch for the flaring of the ribs and that low back arching. And then you're gonna slowly pick yourself, come up, and then slowly lower over the yoga block or your small ball. Inhale, lift, come up. Exhale, slowly lower down. Just slowly opening through that chest. If it feels really good just to hold it down, you can stay down and work on opening. We'll do three more coming up. The head's nice and heavy in those hands. Last one. Come all the way back down. And then just carefully roll off to the side and take that out. And then next, I want you to grab hold of your tennis lacrosse ball. And we're gonna come onto our stomach. So we're gonna work on our hip flexor muscle. So you wanna find that bone in the front of your pelvis that wraps around. And you're gonna take the ball and place it right on the inside there. And then we're gonna come onto your stomach. So slowly rolling over. You wanna get that ball. You might have to wiggle coming up a little bit or down a little bit, but you're looking for a spot that's like, oof, that feels pretty intense. Once you find that spot, you can kinda of lower all the way down and just start with your breathing. Try and make sure your legs are nice and relaxed. If this doesn't feel like it's enough, you can come up onto those forearms and still just breathing. So as you breathe in, you're pushing your stomach into that ball. As you exhale, let that ball kind of sink up into that psoas muscle a little bit more. 
This is great because that muscle attaches onto the front part of your back and this can help ease any back discomfort that you have. Say this is feeling pretty good and you want to add on. You can definitely stay right here, so make sure you listen to your body. But you can curl those toes underneath, press through the heel and straighten that leg, and then lower back down. So straighten the leg, press through the heel, and then lower back down. One more time, straighten through that leg. That might feel really good. And the last one to really add on would be to lift the leg up. Making sure your pelvis isn't rotating up off the ground. You're trying to keep the weight over the ball and then lifting up. You can even lift the leg up if you relax your um, upper body down. Maybe it was feeling a little pinchy in the back and you lower the upper back. So playing around with each of these, with any of the myofascial release, this is the technique that we're doing now, you want to make sure that you're not overdoing it. So 30 or 60 seconds in each spot, and then you'll find a new spot because you can definitely overhydrate those tissues and just make them a little bit tighter. Good. Okay, next, bring it over to your other side. So the same exact spot, we're just switching it over to that other side. And I really want you to pay attention to how your left side feels compared to your right side. Maybe one side's a little bit tighter, maybe one side burns a little bit more. You wanna spend a little bit more time on that side that's like, whew, this is a little tighter. You want each side to be equal. So again, you can curl those toes underneath, kind of press through the heel. Just working on seeing which one fits you best. You can lower down. You can lift that leg up and come back down. And that same idea, 30, 60 seconds each spot. And if at any point during this video you want to spend a little extra time on the exercise, just hit pause so you can do a couple more repetitions and then continue moving on. Good, we'll do one more on this side. If you felt like one side was definitely a lot tighter, definitely hit that pause button and go back and spend a little more time on that side. So the next muscle group we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our quads. So there's two different muscle groups you can do within the quad. So you can do your rectus muscle, which comes all the way up the center and it actually attaches onto the front part of your hip. And then you also have the outside, your vastus lateralis muscle that comes up here. And if you've got any of that knee pain going on, it attaches down to that IT band. And if that muscle gets really tight, that part of the quad muscle, it can pull on the IT band. So that's a great one to help loosen that up. So we're gonna start off with the rectus. So you're gonna take the ball, place the ball right in front of your kneecap. Then you're gonna shift your weight forward onto the ball and bring your other leg out to the side and you're gonna come down onto that ball. You're gonna, maybe you need to move up and down until you find a spot that's like, whew. And once you find that spot, you're gonna bend your knee and straighten. Bend your knee and straighten it. You want to look for about four or five spots along your quad that are pretty tight and bend and straighten about four or five times each spot. If it feels like it's too much to bend and straighten the knee, just relax your muscles, breathe into it and lower down. That's totally fine. You don't have to bend or straighten. All right, so we're going to move down. The ball is going to come up. We're still rolling along that midline of your quad. Little bend and straight. And really remembering how this side feels because we're going to compare it to the other side. Good. Work your way down a little bit more. Maybe you kind of roll more to the outside of that hip, outside of your quad, and you're going to get a little bit more of that vastus lateralis muscle that attaches into the IT band. Ooh, and this one feels really good. <laughs> Try and relax into it. Good, we'll do one more. So roll down one more spot. And then just a little bend and straighten. 
Still trying to use that breath. Good. Now we're gonna switch to the other side. So that same thing applies if you have one side that is significantly tighter and you notice more tender spots, spend some more time on that, that leg. All right, so the ball goes front of the kneecap. And then we're gonna roll forward onto it, bring our other leg out to the side and come down. So you're gonna kind of roll up and down till you find that sore spot. And then bend and straighten. So for me, I would definitely wanna spend more time on my left side because this is so much tighter than my other side. And just that bend and straighten. So if you go straight up that thigh, you're getting that rectus muscle that will attach onto the front part of your hip. And then also, if you go up the outside, you're getting the muscle that attaches onto the IT band. Just noticing what muscle feels a little tighter. Maybe you had some discomfort before we started this, and maybe you'll notice a difference afterward. It's really tuning into that body awareness. So four or five spots along that thigh, four or five bends, and if it's too much with the bending and straightening, then you can just hold it there. Good, we're gonna roll down a little bit more. Bend and straighten. Ooh, this side's so much tighter. Let's try and ease into it. You're doing great, you're almost there. Good, we'll find one more spot. Maybe roll a little bit more to the outside of that thigh. Good. Last one. Great, and then slowly come off that. Ooh, but you'll be glad to put this off to the side. So we're done with the ball. If you have that yoga block, you're gonna grab your yoga block and come onto your back. So now that we rolled out those hip flexors and quads, you're gonna take the yoga block Place it underneath that triangle, your sacrum bone, so it's like right below your low back. And then I want you to bring your right knee in towards your chest. Grab behind the back of that knee and then straighten the left leg out. So keep pulling the right leg in, lengthen out through that left thigh, and you should feel a gentle stretch in the front of that left hip. Keep lengthening through the heel, gently pulling that right leg in. If this doesn't feel like a good enough stretch or you want a little bit more, say you've been practicing for a little bit and you want to up it, what you can do is take the block and just flip the block up to the second highest level and do that same thing. You want to make sure the block feels nice and stable and then you just lengthen out through that leg. Keep pressing through the heel, bringing that knee in towards your chest, and try to take any tension and stress out of your neck and shoulders. And this is a great muscle to work on because of its attachments, especially if we sit a lot during the day, this muscle can get really tight and it will pull on that back, good. And then we're gonna slowly switch to the other side. So the right leg comes down, bring that left knee in towards your chest, take your right leg lengthen out through the right heel, pull that left knee in, relax the neck and shoulders. And just check in to see left side versus right side. You might have one that you feel more pulling than the other one. And it's just using the breath to ease into it. If this stretch feels great and you wanna hold it a little bit longer, just hit that pause button. And then you're gonna slowly slide the right foot back in. Left foot comes down towards the ground. And you're gonna press the hips up, take that yoga block out. And then come back onto your back again. We're gonna work on a nerve glide. So you're gonna start with bringing your right knee in towards your chest. That left foot can stay bent to take some stress off of your back, or if you wanna lengthen out, you can lengthen out through it. 
You're gonna gently start to straighten your leg and point your toes towards the ceiling. And then you're gonna bend your knee, pull your toes up towards you. Straighten the leg, point the toes, bend the knee, pull the foot up towards you. So this is called a nerve glide. We're putting that sciatic nerve on stretch and slack at the same time. You want to imagine your nerves like floss going back and forth, nice and smooth. And if there's something, inflammation, a tight muscle, that nerve, when you stretch it all the way out, can get pulled. This is just a great way to stretch the hamstrings and that nerve going back and forth. You do not want to be like stretching, pushing as much as you possibly can. Just go to you feel that little pull and then back right off and slowly ease your way into it because you can definitely irritate that nerve. Just keep using the breath gliding back and forth. And straightening the leg, pointing those toes, bending the knee, pull the foot up towards you for three, two, last one. Great, and then we're gonna switch. Left knee comes in, right leg goes, either stays bent or we straighten it out. Nice and relaxed through the neck and shoulders and slowly start to straighten and point and then bend that knee. And what you're looking for is how the left side feels compared to your right side. So it's all about that body awareness and creating balance from side to side. Maybe one side's a little bit tighter, maybe you feel that zing a little bit sooner. It's just using the breath, easing your way into it, and notice if you can start to go a little bit further with it. Three, three, two, one more. Good. And then both knees bend up. So now that we've worked on our mobility, we're going to start to work on a little bit of strengthening. We're going to work on our transverse abdominis muscle, our lowest, deepest muscle here. So you want to focus on that belly button area, taking your belly button and pulling it down towards the mat, and then kind of lifting it up towards your head. You want to be careful that you don't rock the pelvis underneath and that you're not pushing the stomach muscles out. You want to be lifting up and in. Almost like if you imagine you take these two bones in the front of your pelvis and trying to pull those bones together, or if your hand is on your stomach, trying to kind of pull your stomach away from that hand. Neck and shoulders stay nice and relaxed. And then you're just gonna gently march from side to side. Keeping sure that the pelvis is nice and stable, that you're not rocking from side to side. You don't wanna feel any pulling in your low back arching in the low back. It's just gently going back and forth, keep the neck and shoulders relaxed. If you start to feel that your stomach pushes out or that you're rocking the pelvis, just stop and reset. And with all strengthening and stability exercises, I'm not necessarily having you count how many you can do or two sets of 10. Go till you feel those muscles getting fatigued and then take a little break and then head right back into another set of them. Good, keep gentle marching from side to side. Good, now this might feel good and you wanna keep up with this. If you wanna add on a little bit more resistance, if you grab hold of that yoga block again, and then we're gonna take our hands, place the hands on the yoga block. It's almost a little gentle squeeze of the arms coming in and then gently lift it just above your head. It's gonna add a little bit more resistance to that core. So belly button pulls down towards the mat and up towards your head. And then we're just gonna to start to march. Keep reaching those arms up overhead, pull that core in nice and tight. And you still have to breathe through all this as well. Small little taps, keep reaching through those fingertips. Make sure the neck and shoulders stay nice and relaxed. Keep pulling that core in good. We've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 
Last one. Those arms come back down by your side. Okay. Last strengthening exercise for today is our glutes. So you're going to bend your knees. Feet pressing into the ground. You're nice and soft on your toes. That core pulls in. And you really want to feel it in your glutes. You're going to press into your feet, which your feet are about hip distance apart. You're going to slowly press those hips up towards the ceiling. Think of lengthening out through the front of your thighs. Imagine as if you have a small band around the outside of your knees and you're just meeting that resistance. So you're kind of pressing out and that's going to kick on the outer hips. You can take those hands and place them on your glutes to make sure those muscles are firing. And you don't want any pain or discomfort in the low back. So if you do, maybe lower down a little bit and then re-engage all those muscles. So once you know those muscles are firing, equal weight in both feet, you're gonna slowly lower and then just press up a little. Lower down and press and lift. Nice and soft in the toes. If you put a little bit more weight into your heels, you'll fire up those glutes a little more. Good. E trying to keep equal weight and see if you notice if one's working a little bit harder than the other one. Small little pulses here. Good. And then you're gonna hold at the top and then do small, super, super, super little tiny pulses at the top. Okay, we have five, four, three, two, one. And then go through a bigger range of motion. Those glutes should be fine. You can take a break at any time. Bigger range for five, four, three. Fire up those glutes, two. Last one, awesome job. Slowly come all the way back down and just gently bring those knees in towards your chest. Kind of rocking from side to side. And then you're just gonna gently reach your arms, come all the way up overhead, stretch out through your fingertips, reach through your toes, lengthen everything out. Nice big breath in. Exhale, get super heavy, relax down on that mat. And then slowly bring those knees back in towards your chest. You're going to roll on to your side. And just carefully come on up. We're going to take one last deep breath and lift those arms. Come all the way up overhead. Exhale, bring your hands down towards heart center. I hope that you enjoyed this video to help with low back tightness, knee pain, knee tightness. If you have any questions about anything that we talked about today, let me know down below in the comments. If you like the video, give me a like, and I hope you have a fabulous day. Namaste.